Hello, everyone. Hello, and a warm welcome to today's Home Fun webinar. Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Um, I see lots of people have joined us, and we did have a little technical hitch, so apologies that we're a couple of minutes late. But looking at your messages now, you can see us, you can hear us, and we're all good. Just say yes, just to reassure <laughs> us. Um, these webinars, if you haven't joined us before, are specifically um, targeting you teachers who are preparing younger learners or teaching primary age students English um, and specifically for these current times where we are um, teaching um, our students from home or they're in home situations. So um, if you are familiar with these webinars, then you'll know that this is the final one today. Um, I'll just introduce myself. I'm based here in Madrid in Spain. My name is Stuart Vinnie and this is my colleague Sarah. Thank you very much Stuart and I'm Sarah. I'm Sarah Ellis and I'm based in Italy and I work for Cambridge Assessment English. And good, uh, good morning, good afternoon, wherever you are. Thank you for joining us. Thank you. We're quite relieved because we had a scary moment where there was nobody here and we think something went wrong. So it's <laughs> nice to see you all saying yes and hello. Um, <clears throat> lots of places coming up here. I can see India. I've seen Spain. I've seen Cambridge, surprisingly. Yes, Romania, um, Bangkok. Lebanon, Bangkok. Must be quite late in Bangkok. Yeah, Lebanon, Great. yes. Nice to see everybody hey. here. Um, okay, so before we hand you over to our guest speakers today, that's Anne and Jane, uh, Sarah and I are just going to spend a couple of minutes with you um, just talking through and reminding you of some of the links. Um, as I've already said, this is the final webinar in our series of home fun webinars. So it's quite a quite a momentous occasion for us, Sarah, isn't it? It's the yeah, last absolutely. one. Absolutely. Uh, so I'm glad you've joined us for the last one. We've got two of our speakers with us today. Anne and Jane have both been working hard for the over the last couple of weeks doing the webinars that you can see on the screen. And the handouts we share with you today will have links to all of the previous webinars so you can watch the recordings and you can download the handouts associated with each of those. Handouts will be shared at the end in your chat box down there. So just wait until the end and, and you'll, you'll get those. Sarah. Yes, it's been, it's been an action-packed series. Uh, and so when you do download the others, if you haven't seen them, you'll find lots of interesting uh, material as well. So just a couple of things about uh, this webinar. And uh, we want to invite you, of course, to write in the chat on the right-hand side of the screen. And many of you are already doing that. So please, if you haven't already, um, please tell us what country you're in and what town you're in in that country. We'd love to know where you're watching us from. It helps us feel a little bit closer to you. Um, and of course, if you have any issues with connectivity, I hope not, but if you do, uh, you'll see at the top of the screen, there is a refresh button. And if you press that, it will take you out of the webinar and then bring you immediately back into the webinar and hopefully, hopefully give you better connection if that happens. Um, we hope that doesn't, but if you do, that's what that's for. So just a couple of things about resources. We will be coming to talk about this again at the end of the uh, session as well, but just so you can see that the um, Cambridge Assessment English has a special part on the website called Supporting Every Teacher, where you can download resources for teachers. So we'll tell you more in detail at the end, but you can see the QR code if you want to go there directly. And I will just pass over back to Stuart. Yep, and just to say the same, um, exactly the same support across Cambridge University Press. So that's the two sister organisations sharing the same, um, sharing the same support here, supporting every teacher. So have a look on both websites. We'll come back this, to this at the end, but you'll look, find additional, um, as Sarah said, blogs, articles, downloads, lesson plans, videos, all kinds of things. Um, we will show you these at the end. And just to mention as well um, that starting from tomorrow, until Friday, we have the Cambridge at Home Experience, and that's lots and lots of speakers and experts and guests and celebrities um, speaking on a whole range of different topics, all kinds of stuff from five minutes up until I don't know how long, 30 minutes or more. Yeah, um, four days. On it, aren't you, on yeah, I'm, I'm speaking on Thursday with my colleague Donia from Cambridge, and right. uh, the, the days that they're full days, so lots of lots of things to, to sign up for. We've got some uh, authors, if any of you know um, a British author, Stephen Fry or Ian McEwan, they'll be reading stories for us. Uh, so go along, check it out. The links will all be in the handouts that we're providing at the end today 
you can register for free and join us. Um, so that's just to give you a heads up. We'll come back to these at the end. Um, but first, the reason we're all here today is um, to see Anne and Jane deliver the final session in our home fun session of um, webinars for young learners. Um, I'm going to introduce Anne in a moment, but first, Sarah, if you'd like to introduce Jane. Yes. Okay, thank you, Stuart. Yes, it's my great pleasure to introduce Jane Ritter. Uh, and Jane has been teaching adults and young learners for over 20 years in both Italy and in Hong Kong. So hello, Jane. Uh, she is, has extensive experience of, of Cambridge English qualifications, um, both as an examiner teacher and an examiner trainer as well. Um, she is also a very experienced teacher trainer, teaching on CELTA and DELTA courses, and has been in involved in various teacher development and training programs in both Italy and in um, other countries around the world. Um, it's important to know that she is the author of the Home Fun booklets for the movers levels, as well as some other materials and resources for Cambridge University Press. Just a little bit about Jane. In her free time, she runs around with her two boys and her dog, Minnie. She also enjoys cooking, wine, and most things Italian, as she's based in Italy. So over to you, to, well, actually, it's over to you, Stuart, to introduce Anne. Anne, okay, good. Anne is appearing now. Here she is. So oh. Anne Robinson, if you don't know Anne, she's done lots and lots of webinars for us previously, lots of training. Anne's a teacher, a teacher trainer, a seminar presenter, webinar presenter, course designer, author, astronaut. <laughs> and most recently, most recently for us, she's written on our Fun Skills series, which we will be using samples of today, and we'll be making those samples free for you to download later. Um, so all the material you hear, see here today, you'll, you'll, you'll be able to get your hands on at the end of the session. Um, Anne is um, um, uh, author of Fun Four series, if you've used those before. She's written the Booster uh, Advanced Level for us, and... <laughs> fun skills as we've said what we'll be seeing today a little bit of um i know that anne is based in santander in the north of spain and i know that anne likes plates <laughs> you're going to find out more about that in a moment so uh sarah and i will turn off our cameras and come and join you all later and speak to you more about resources and so on so until then enjoy the webinar goodbye thank you sarah and Stuart. hi anne Hello, <laughs> let's go. <laughs> so how can we connect learning to our learners world? How can we make sure that learning is relevant and engaging? Hmm. This makes me think of me too. I want to find out more. Me too. So, let's think about some of the things our learners can do at home and have fun too. So, we're at home and I've got some fruit. What fruit have you got in your home? at the moment. Can you write some ideas in the chat? What fruit have you got in your home? I think the chat's in. Strawberries, oh, pawpaw, apples, orange, bananas, mangoes, yum, watermelon, grapes, Fantastic, everyone. Excellent. Yes, some of you have mangoes, coconuts, watermelon, pineapples. This will depend on the weather and where you are. So what could we do with our fruit? Eat it. Juggle it. I can't do that, but I'd like to. Plate it. Okay. This is an activity from the Fun School's home booklet, and it's a fun, creative activity and great for revising fruit vocabulary and the face. OK, so you could give your learners an example and ask them to make their own with the fruit that they have in their house. 
you don't have to just make you don't have to limit it to fruit you could also use things other food like pasta beans vegetables these kind of things can work just as well or they could go out into the garden if they have one and use twigs and leaves all kinds of things to make a, make a face your learners could share their faces and and or show them to each other online and they'll all decide which one they'd like to eat or which is the most interesting plate Okay, in this on this page of fun skills, there is also a really lovely listening activity that the learners can do at home, and it's from the fun skills home booklet. Okay, um, just look quickly at the pictures. Can you tell me what's your favorite animal? What's your favorite animal? Okay, as I said, this listening activity, you'll be able to download at the end and the listening files are there for you. Okay, they're coming through now. Dog, horse, snake, dog. Okay, the listening files are there for you to download so you can, you can use this with, um, with your learners. And it's great practice for starters listening part three. Okay. Elephant, sharks, sharks. Your favorite animals are shark, fish, horse, dolphins, panda. Yeah, lovely. Okay. I like snakes. Okay. This is my snake. Stuart, can you make me a bit bigger? Okay. This is my snake. It's long and thin. Ooh, can you see? Okay. This is my snake. snake. It's long and thin. It's got no legs, but it can swim. Can you see me? Okay. You can make this snake. This is one of the fun boost activities in the home booklet. Very, very simple. Just take a paper plate, okay, and draw circles, okay. You can again color and decorate. You can either use paint or pens, okay, and cut along the lines to make a snake. Obviously, give your snake a name. And then as a class, you can join up and say the poem together. So it's a good way to, to concentrate on, on rhyming words. Okay. You can make a snake or a crocodile. Be careful when you see him smile. Oops, I'm doing the wrong way around. Okay, can you see my crocodile? Okay, some, well, let's just think big for a moment. Some crocodiles are five meters long. How long is five meters? Okay. Throughout fun skills there are a lot of these activities that encourage learners to think about the world around them and as we're at home learners can move around the house and measure things measure how long they are okay if a crocodile is five meters long how long is five meters would it fit in the kitchen it definitely wouldn't fit in my bathroom Okay, you could also encourage learners to think about how long other things are, measure them and compare. Okay. Here we've put together a Pinterest page which has lots of great ideas. Um, this morning about 70 more people have begun to con contribute to the Pinterest page um, which is here and the link will be in in the handouts at the end um, there are lots of things that you can do with paper plates this is my koala okay and if you'd like to join us and share your ideas and look at the fantastic ideas that are there please do so Anne what do you think I'm inspired and I'm thinking big because I am with Think Big Giraffe. How tall can giraffes 
grow to? How tall can a grown up giraffe be? Do you know? Type your ideas in the chat box. How tall is an adult giraffe? Five meters, so you think a giraffe is as tall as a crocodile is long? Okay, well actually, some giraffes can be six meters tall. And get your students to think about how tall is six meters? In this case, it probably would be impossible or dangerous to measure six meters tall, but uh, on your phone uh, or on their parents phone perhaps they've got an app that they could do that um, or perhaps one of their parents knows how tall their house is for example so how tall is six meters i've got some plates at home and some of them are quite special to me so i've took a photograph of some of my favorite plates that i've got at home I'm going to tell you about one of those plates in the photo. Can you imagine which plate it is? So this plate was given to me in Istanbul in Turkey. I'd been speaking at a conference and at the end of my session, the organizers came up and presented me with this plate. I really like it because um, I know exactly when I got it because on the back it says the year and, and the occasion where it was and it also has my name. It was actually created for me by an artist and is handmade and the decoration on the front is also um, made I presume by the same artist who signed it. I love the flowers and the colours on it and I love everything about it, the way it feels, okay? So this is my plate, can you see it there in the middle of the photograph? Okay, so that is my plate. I use it, I don't use it very often, I would never put it in the dishwasher, but I use it to uh, sometimes to put sweets or little cookies on if somebody is coming round or sometimes some dried fruit. So I created, uh, Stuart, can you move my um, photo there for me or my video? Um, I created a, a worksheet which you'll find in your handouts um, and your in the handouts, this sheet is, is blank, okay? So it has a space for students to either draw or put a photograph of uh, a plate that belongs to somebody in their family or perhaps to them. And then they've got five, uh, well, four questions. Uh, how old the plate is, when, when the person got it, where they got it, what they use it for, and a description, which would include the colors and things, but also why you like it, okay? Why you chose that, um, that plate. So I think a lot of um, homes have got plates um, that people like very much for whatever reason, possibly because of the history behind the plate or uh, because they just they like it, they like the, what they use it for and the colours. Uh, and what about if your students have maybe got a plate from when they were a baby or very young and they could, um, they could find out about their plate who gave it to them. Perhaps it was a present from somebody in the family when they were born or not long after they were born. Um, and perhaps they could create a, a book of uh, our family's plates. I'm going to create a book about my plates for my two daughters so that they know why they're special and where they came from. And if you use this activity or if you'd like to, show, to share photographs of your plate, you can post uh, the, the, the worksheets if your students complete them or your photos uh, using the hashtag fun writing skills. 
you, uh, posted on pace, Facebook if you have a Facebook account or on Instagram, on Twitter. And that would be a really nice way to continue sharing after this webinar. Okay, so if you do do that, I'd love to see what your, your favorite plates look like and what your students create um, with their plates. In this photograph, which comes from Fun Skills 5, we have uh, three uh, pictures uh, together. So we've got a bottle, which is being used to put flowers in it. We have a robot, which is being made from old cardboard, and it has a crown. And on the right, we have a puppet. And what was, what's the puppet made from? Can you see the puppet there on the, who's leaning like that? What's that puppet made of? Yes, it's an old sock, okay? And the next activity in Fun Skills uh, gives the students six sentences that Claire and her classmates have written with ideas for how we can use old socks. Okay, I've just told you the answer. Uh, the students would have to read the sentences and decide which of the three things, the bottle or the cardboard or the sock, Claire and her classmates have chosen. I actually told you the answer. And then next, uh, again, this is the activity in Fun Skills Level 5, Students work in groups and they take the glass bottle and think of other ideas apart from putting flowers in a glass bottle that you could use a glass bottle for. We're not going to do that activity because we've been looking at plates. So I adapted that activity um, to work on this theme. So what ideas do you have? How can we use a plate? apart from putting food on it. Can you type your ideas into the chat box? Perhaps think of things you can put on a plate or you can put a plate on top of other things. Or perhaps you can put the plate like that instead of horizontal. So what could we use a plate for? A clock. A frisbee, okay, uh, hopefully not a very fragile plate if we're going to uh, use it as a frisbee. A photo frame, yeah. A pen holder, okay, yeah, I suppose we could lay um, pens on top of a plate. As an ashtray, if you smoke, okay, I don't. <laughs> Okay, so there are lots of ideas there that you're coming up with. And uh, in my experience, children will have even more imagination than us adults. So uh, just as Jane showed you earlier, the Pinterest board for paper plates and things that you can make with them, or just from pieces of card, you don't have to use a plate, okay, as long as you've got a big piece of plate, because I noticed somebody was saying it was difficult to get paper plates where they are. Uh, there's always a solution. Um, so we've created another board on Pinterest, um, and this only has at the moment seven pins, seven ideas for um, things to do with plates. Um, and it would be wonderful if we could uh, share some of those ideas that you've been putting in the chat box, because they're fantastic ideas to add to this board. So if you make anything or you can show how to use it or you can find um, an image on on the internet and share it with pinterest okay uh, you can send it to me or jane and we could add it to this board i particularly like uh, lots of people like the lamp i like the lamp too uh, but i also like the idea of the giving plate so the giving plate is uh, the idea is you bake something or make something some cookies perhaps and then you give them to a friend or a family member um, and then they make something else to give either back to you or to another person so this idea of sharing 
these uh, happiness and sharing things that you've made, especially for another person. I think it's a lovely idea. Okay, so by all means, come and visit uh, and on the Pinterest board and please share more ideas with you, with us. And Jane, tell me, can you find plates in the sea? <clears throat> um, I don't know, Anne, perhaps. But just before I go and look, I wanted to show you one of my favorite plates. Oh, it's got the sea in the plate. Beautiful. That's a beautiful plate, Jane. This is um, from the Amalfi Coast. That's the typical plates from from that area, and it's one of my favorites. I usually use it to put sweets in. Right. So you you can so, complete the sheet and send it. <laughs> exactly. So perhaps you can find plates in the sea in an old boat, in a, in a box, in an old boat. Um, let's go and take a look. So here we are in the sea, and here is my favorite animal. This is my favorite sea animal. This cool animal is clever. It, eat, it eats cold fish and swims. It never walks. It loves to play. That's right. It's a, what is it? Can you write in the chat? Yeah. I do love that response about the tectonic plates in the sea. Yep, definitely. This is a dolphin. Very good. Excellent. Okay. Here are some animal shadows. There is a dolphin. That's the yellow one. What are the other sea animals? Can you write ideas in the chat? Dolphin, dolphin, it's a very clever animal, yes. Okay, the other animals, what do you think? It's a shark, a whale, okay, you can be a jellyfish. Very good, everyone. Yes, we've got dolphin, shark, whale, crocodile, jellyfish, and octopus. Great. This reading activity is about another sea animal all about sharks, okay? And it's a really good activity, um, particularly if you're preparing learners for movers. It's, it's very similar to, or is exactly the same as reading and writing part four. Can you just take a minute to read and tell me what are the correct words? As you can see, there's always an example given and it's the same in the reading and writing test. Okay, what are the, quest, what are the correct words? Okay, the chat seems to have stopped a minute. Okay, I can see some answers coming through. Check your answers here. Remember, we'll give you this, this material at the end. You can download it. Very good. So number one is near, number two is than, number three, biggest. Okay, and it's interesting, the shark is the big, or the great white shark is the biggest, and it's more than six meters long. So thinking about length, and a giraffe is six meters tall. Okay, so thinking about height. Um, number four is eat, and number five, of. Great. So thinking back to the shadows that I showed you before, I'm going to show you how to make a sea animals question wheel that your learners can use in class, in class or even online. We'll show you in a second how to do that. So you need the, the top circle, okay, which should be about um, 16, 16 centimeters wide. Okay, and you need to cut out two sections here. Okay, and then the bottom circle, okay, should be about 18 centimeters. And you need to divide that up into 12 sections. 
I would check the age of the learners that you're working with. It might be easier just to give them a photocopy with space to write in. Okay. In the spaces, you need to write six animal questions and six animal shadows. Okay. Put the, the smaller wheel on top of the other. Okay. And take a pin, put it in. Can you see the back? Okay. And now I have the wheel. Okay. So let me show you how to use it now. Anne, where are you? I'm here. Okay. So we're facing each other. Anne would have her wheel, but she's left it behind today. Um, That's you. <laughs> I'm going to spin until Anne tells me to stop. Stop. Oh. Can you see the picture? Is it a, yes, it's jellyfish. There's the question. Can it talk? Mm. Uh, I don't think so. Or if it can talk, I don't understand what it's saying. <laughs> Thank you, Anne. <laughs> <laughs> see you in a bit. Okay, there's the instructions from Fun uh, Home Booklet uh, Sorry. With, with the instructions. And I've got another plate that I made, okay? And yeah, you can see my plate. Uh, so I use different things to make it. This at the bottom is not actually sand because at the moment we're not allowed to go to the beach, although I live very near beaches, but we can't go there. So that is actually quinoa at the bottom that looks like the sand. I think it does its job. I did have some little shells because I quite often collect those. So I had some shells. I painted the sea. I stuck these little fish on and the boat. Okay, so that's my sea plate. So right now, I would like you to stop typing in the chat box because I would like you just to listen to my story and some questions. Okay, so if you just relax, close your eyes, if, if you find it's better, it helps you concentrate, okay? Because I'd like you to visualize and to imagine. So this is your trip to the bottom of the sea. It's morning. You're ready for your trip to the bottom of the sea. You have everything ready. What are you taking with you? How are you carrying your stuff? for the trip. So what are you taking and how are you carrying that stuff? Who are you going on this trip to the sea with? Now you leave home and you go to the seaside. How do you get to the seaside? How do you get there? You get to the boat because you're going on this trip out to, in the, to the sea and you're going on the boat. So you get on the boat. How big is the boat? How are you feeling? The boat takes you to the middle of the sea. You jump into the water. Splash! 
How does the water feel? How do you feel? You swim down to the bottom of the sea. You look around. What can you see? Oh, something touches your leg. What is it? So what's touched your leg? Type your answer, your last answer, into the chat box. What was that that just touched your leg? A jellyfish, you're probably in pain. A shark, you might be in pain too. A monster, oh. Starfish, oh, I like the idea of a star. Seaweed, okay, that's nice and soft, or you might be too slimy and soft. The Loch Ness Monster just flew past in the chat box, oh dear. Okay, so this was what touched my leg, a nice little fishy, okay, and it's nice and soft, okay, but it gave me quite a shock, actually. So as you can see in the chat box from all your different answers, your stories were very different, and they're pro probably unique. That's what we want, okay? We want our students to use their imagination. And this, the questions that I included in this activity come from this activity, which is from the Fun Skills Home Booklet Level 4. Um, so these come and they're at the bottom of the page, okay? So in your handout, I've given you this, which has the the questions and the visualization activity, and I've also given you this activity. Now, last week, if you were at the webinar that I did about writing, um, I talked about thinking about the canvas, thinking about the size of the paper, of the page. So what I'd suggest is that you get your students to make those boxes bigger, so that they have more room to draw in. Primary uh, learners very often need more space to draw in. I'm not sure, I just know. Stuart, can you move me again, please? I'm. Um, and if your students are going to uh, add uh, speech or thought bubbles, then those should be watery bubbles, yeah? Because when you speak under the sea, your speech is very watery and perhaps very slow, okay? So if they're drawing speech bubbles or thought bubbles, think bubbles, then these are the kind of styles of speech bubbles or thought bubbles that they could um, draw. And again, if you use this activity, Please share your students' uh, comics uh, and use the hashtag fun writing skills, and then we'll be able to uh, see each other's stories and ideas. I'd love to see them. So now it's time to head home. And we're going to Jane's home right now. <laughs> okay. I think uh, a lot of us have spent more time than usual in our living rooms. Can you look at the things that we find in a living room? What would you like to have in yours? Would you like a table football? Would you like a screen? I'd love a big screen that I could pull down and watch movies on. Right. Write the things that you would like to have in your living room. Big sofa, a lamp. Yeah, I think my son Jamie would love a small fridge with snacks and drinks. Big screen, sofa, 3D screen. Yeah, that would be quite exciting, wouldn't it? 
Okay, so this is an activity, another fun boost activity to get your students thinking about their environment. Okay, you could, you would ask them what they would like to have in their perfect living room. They circle the things that they want. They can add ideas. There may be something that isn't here that you would like to add. Yeah. Um, you would then ask your, your students to draw their perfect living room and share and compare. Okay, someone said 1980s arcade game, so like a, a pinball machine. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Yes, okay. So once you've done this activity, we could also think about the surroundings, the house surroundings. And one lovely activity that is very popular with adults on Facebook, I'm sure you've seen, there is the view from my window, okay? This isn't my living room, this is my bathroom, um, but um, it's easily transferable to younger learners, okay? They've thought about their living room, they've thought about the perfect living room. Now they could focus on the view from their living room. And this is an example of one of my family members, Leo. Um, this is how he sees the view from our bathroom, okay? He's focused on the lines, the colors, and the shadows. Okay. okay. Another great activity is what would you like to see from your window? Would you like to see the sea? Would you like to see an ice cream shop? Okay, what would you like to see? What would you like to see from your window? The sea, the sea, a rainbow, big mountains, yeah, seaside, snow and deers, how lovely, yes. Now that all the animals, sheep, nature, the beach, a waterfall, wow. Richard Gere. <laughs> okay, thank you. They're really great ideas. This is what Elias, a friend of mine, would like to see from his, from his window. He's built, um, he's built his, his building, the surroundings, the road leading to his house. And in the center of all that, there is an ice skating rink, okay? He loves ice hockey, and this is what he would like to see from his window. Diego would like to see a parkour circuit, and he made one using a 3D program called SketchUp for Schools, which is free to use online, and. It is right now, yes, yep. uh, under lockdown, they've made it available um, for free use uh, from home. You can actually use it online um, free anyway, but right now you can then download the sketches. Because yep. I suggested to Diego that he made um, some buildings and he said, can I draw them? And I said, of course you can. So that's what he created. Great. I'll leave you to the next part. <laughs> so another activity, uh, this time from the uh, level six of the home booklets, um, which are free to download the whole booklets two, four and six, and you've got those links in your handout. Um, there is a suggestion that uh, students can build their own town. It could be their own town as it is, or it could be what they'd like to have in their town or their perfect town. This will be, in, I think it'd be a great summer project perhaps for your students to do. And perhaps they can write names um, in English of the shops and the different buildings, make signs for them too. Um, but I thought also we could adapt this, um, taking the example of the living room that we saw there and get them to think about what they would what would be a perfect town for them what things would you like to have in a town so 
So what would you like to have in a town? Or perhaps actually, no, think of one of your students who is about, let's say, nine or 10 or 11. What would your students like to have in, a, in their perfect town? I like the singing birds on the branch and the trees. Park, be near nature, a cinema, okay. So I've added some ideas here, some suggestions that you could uh, give students to start the ball rolling and get them to choose these and then add some more. Because very often if you just say, what's in your perfect town, then maybe the ideas don't come so quickly or perhaps the most imaginative ideas don't come so quickly. So by giving them a few ideas, I'm sure they will come up with more. And as is happening a lot um, in the current situation around the world, a lot of uh, quite famous people, but also not so famous people, are sharing resources for uh, people to use at home. So I uh, discovered actually from one of my friends on Facebook that the architect Norman Foster, who might have built um, a building in your area, he certainly built, he built the Gherkin in London, he's built the Sage uh, um, Concert Theatre, an art theatre near where I'm from in Newcastle, and he's going to build the new underground train station in Florence, for example, next year. So he's released, uh, he's published on his web page some, um, uh, I think of the word again, um, so some downloadable um, sheets. Templates. Tem thank you, thank you, Jane. <laughs> Mental block there. Okay, so he's, he's released some templates uh, for skyscrapers and different buildings. What you can see there in C is actually a template for a tree. So you'd cover that with green. And you can see, I didn't make that, I'm, but um, a friend of mine made this model, okay, um, with that skyscraper template and the trees, okay? So that's the kind of thing that you, your students could make. If they do create these, then they can share them using the hashtag and they will get back to Norman Foster's studio. Okay, um, and also on this web page, there is a lovely ebook to use with primary students. So, uh, this is uh, what makes a building. You can also watch a video of, being, of this being read, a lovely video. And I love the book because it talks about how a building starts with the foundations, and then we get the walls, and then finally we get the roof. But I like the idea that a building is just incomplete without you, people, inside it to make its heart beat. So if you think of an empty building, perhaps an abandoned building, it's lifeless. There's no heart beating inside it. And thinking about our students, um, I don't know what the situation is where you are, but here in Spain, Children are allowed out with their parents, but obviously they can't go and play football in the park with their friends, um, and they can't really have physical contact with other people. So I thought they could go for a walk and perhaps take this sheet with them, or perhaps they can take a photograph of the sheet, or you can share it that way, and they can look for these things when they go out for their walk. Um, they could take photos, perhaps their parents can take photos for them on their phone or with a camera because they are part of this world. And I, I, I took Norman Foster's uh, last sentence and made it into this sentence because in my opinion, the world is incomplete without people inside it to make its heart beat. So we have all these things in the world but we need to add our human touch to it. So again, this is in your handouts. And I just wanted to share some photos that are on my phone, um, thinking about how we could do this activity. So 
encourage your students if they're doing that activity or when they're going out just simply look up look down get close frame it and a lovely way of framing it if you can see me on camera there is to take your hand and to fold up your hand and then you get you put that hand up to your eye and if you look at those palm trees in my window frame and you look through the hole there in your hand you'll find that you notice a lot more detail and it's framed that's a tip i got from a painter who's from here from santander and i've got some of his paintings and he gave me that tip so that's a very simple way of framing a picture and also tell them to look for the shadows these shadows were on a wall in kiev in ukraine when i was there about a year ago now they were fantastic shadows of trees so look for the shadows too so so we're at home what can we do think big and boost your learning so we'll go hand over to Stuart and Sarah again now and we'll be back for questions if you have any questions great thank you Anne thanks Jane um, that was great um, boosting your learning lots of ideas for everyone there uh, lots of very crafty uh, project-based ideas I hope you agree that these ideas are very practical and very easy to put together I think in homes with things just lying around your house pieces of, yeah, that's fun. Pieces of fruit pens <laughs> dishes whatever you have yeah plates <laughs> you see me drinking tea all session cups um, and that's what they were designed for. All of these sessions were really designed with home teaching or remote teaching in mind, where perhaps you're having difficulty or connecting through internet or other means to uh, your students at home, to young learners at home, uh, and teaching them English, of course. So thanks, big thanks to Anne and Jane. They're going to come back and join us in a moment, just for a minute, uh, to answer any questions you have. So if you have a question you want to ask Anne or Jane about the session today, about the ideas or the the, um, uh, the 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 teaching aspects then come back and pay, pay, put your question in the chat box in a moment um, while we're we're waiting for that let me just quickly run you through uh, the material that you've seen Anne and Jane both referring to today is our uh, six level um, course for uh, younger learners uh, for for learning English called fun skills um, this course is primarily designed to help prepare children for the Cambridge Pre-A1 Starters, A1 Movers and A2 Flyers exams. But they also contain lots of general English activities, project ideas, um, vocabulary and skills. It's all about the skills work. That's reading, writing, listening and speaking. Um, Anne and Jane have both been directly involved in these, um, as well as the home booklets which accompany this series. And the home booklets are what we have included as free downloads in the handouts. If you click down on the bottom of your screen now, you should see your handouts. I think it's that way. I think it's that way. <laughs> Sarah thinks it's that way. Okay, well, depending on how you're doing it. Ha have a look and check it, check, check those out. Um, we, uh, well, Sarah, if you want to talk yes, about Yes, yes, yes. No, this is just to remind people that, um, of course, you can find lots of resources um, on the website here. So uh, Cambridge Assessment English, supporting every teacher. And with the QR code, you can go directly to it. And what you'll find is an interactive PDF which has uh, all the resources related to, to Cambridge English Young Learn tests as well. So pre-A1 starters, um, A1 movers and A2 flyers. And uh, here we just see a page. If you click to the next page, you'll find the page dedicated to Young Learn resources. You'll be able to download flashcards, lesson plans, uh, word lists, word books, uh, posters, lots of really useful uh, material that, um, to support your lessons um, on and offline. Um, so do have a look, explore that. So over to you, Stuart. 
Great. There's a link in the chat box as well for this and on your handouts. Uh, we just, need to move. just to show you the um, just to show you the uh, uh, source for resources like this uh, in Cambridge University Press is supporting every teacher as well. The QR code is here, so if you have a, a, a camera on your telephone, it should pick that out automatically and take you to the website. But the links are also included on the handouts today. This is an example below, by the way, of the Fun Skills Home Booklet that we made available through our uh, website for people to download. All the links on your handouts, as I've said many times, I think. Um, don't forget, if you missed the beginning, we talked about the Cambridge at Home experience, which begins tomorrow and continues until Friday. And that really is a, a total mix up of all kinds of uh, weird and wonderful sessions, short ones, long ones, experts, celebrities, uh, teacher trainers, authors, all kinds of people uh, with all kinds of, of subjects and sessions discussed there to help people as they're at home. So do check that out. Yes. You can register with the links there. Uh, Sarah Three. will be there on Thursday. Yes, yeah? I will. And um, I'll be with Donya. And Anne will be there on Friday. Anne will be there on Friday. So we're all involved as well, but lots yes. of other people. So that that's, by the way, for all ages. It's not just primary. It covers teaching and it covers well-being and all kinds of all, all kinds of other things. And it's action-packed all day. So lots of time. Yes. There we go. You have to live up to that now, Sarah, and make sure it's action-packed in your session on Thursday. <laughs> um, if you're not familiar with our other resource sites, World of Fun is something some of you, I hope, are familiar with. Check it out. World of Fun, the links are on the handouts. This is ideal if you're preparing kids for the Young Learner exams. It's got posters, videos, webinars, booklets, flashcards, everything, lots and lots of resources that you just simply click on, download, print them out and, and and you're ready to go. So do check that out if you haven't seen that before. Um, and well, this this page, this this page used to be where we would tell you what was coming next. But I know. this is it. We are we are at the end today. But I can say that all of the previous webinars are available um, to be watched again, the recordings, and these are on the handouts. You can find a link to these and to the handouts with each webinar. There are no more webinars in this current series of home fun webinars, but judging by the popularity and how many people have come to these, I'm sure we'll be putting together something in the not too distant this future. future. But, yeah, in the, in the meantime, I mean, there's loads of stuff going on across both Cambridge University Press and Cambridge Assessment English. So um, continue with Cambridge. There's yes. lots of stuff. Keep, 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 um, keep in touch. Have um, a look at the websites. Websites oh. and so on, yeah. Yeah, and a um, big thank you to Jane and Anne, of course. Jane and Anne, where are you? Come back, yeah. And if if you have any questions, we've got a couple of minutes, yeah. not, not not very long. We're running a bit a bit late today, but do... Put... There was a, a question about throwing things away. Um, how, do your, how do learners feel about that? Um, as a tip as a mum, I have to throw it away, otherwise I would just have a house full of all kinds of things. But I do take a photograph of it. And um, there are actually lots of nice ebooks that you can put them in so you don't lose the things that you've made, but um, you keep a memory of it. Remember to write down the age as well and the class that they're in. Okay. And um, fun skills, there's a question about the age range. Age, yeah, I saw that, yeah. Anne? Um, well, basically, they were written for really, um, well, part, part, partly to prepare for pre-A1 starters, A1 movers and A2 flyers. But we do have two levels per, le per exam level, as it were. Mm -hmm. So I would say that probably level one, we're talking about, depending on your students' reading and writing skills, to be honest, uh, but possibly probably around seven, eight, nine, seven, eight. Uh, probably not six, certainly in Spain where I teach, um, because of their reading and writing skills, I think. So I think anyway, sort of seven year old upwards. Um, and obviously you do get some very young movers these days. Okay, so the age, maybe 10 years ago, they were older, but uh, children are starting younger and younger and with more exposure to English uh, online, on TV and things. Um, they, the ages are getting younger, but I would say any seven, eight upwards. Yeah. There's, there's six levels, so they could yeah. be matched to, to school years or as a, as a supplementary, or um, they can be a full course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
and it very very much depends on what age the learners are as they go in to do pre-A1 starters yeah. where you yeah. are. I mean, in some places they're younger, some places yeah. they're a little bit older. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, right. So, yeah, so I think that's the, the answer, really. There was um, a question just now. I've made a lot of things with waste material. How to share? Um, well, if uh, the, the Pinterest. The, the Pinterest yeah, and the links can... are on the handouts. Yeah. Because if they're Great. not made from plates, but they're made from other things, I can create a new board with uh, things made from recycled things or uses for other things. Yeah. Yes. So at the moment we've got plates, but <laughs> that can grow and it can be cups or cardboard or whatever. Okay. So uh, please uh, send send me them to the Pinterest. Uh, you can also Great. contact me via my web page if you needed to email me um, about anything like that that you would like to suggest. Great. So by all means. Um, we're going to do some follow-up um, blogs for this series yeah. of webinars just to show the replays, to share the handouts again, and a chance for Anne and Jane to reconnect with you to, to talk a little bit further about the mm -hmm. topics in these webinars. And we can probably include the pin in, pin Pinterest um, updates yeah. as well and, and, yes. and see how many you can go and have a look, see how many are, are on there. So those will be coming in the next few weeks as soon as we get a chance to put them up on the on the websites. Um, I think that's all. Has anybody? I think so. Okay. Well, of course, just to say massive thanks to Jane and Anne again for not only today, but for your help for the last couple of weeks with these um, brilliant webinars. I think they've been really imaginative, productive, and really connected to teachers who are teaching from home, teaching remotely, which is what it's all about at the moment for all of us. Uh, Sarah and I have been very involved with these since the beginning, so it's quite strange now. Yes, it will, <laughs> we'll miss it. We'll miss it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and also, um, thank you to Paula and. Yes, I was just going to oh, say. Sorry, sorry, no, Paula sorry. And Jenny. Paula <laughs> and, and Jenny. Jenny. Yeah, Jenny. Absolutely. And Fabio. Paula and Fabio, Jenny. And Fabio, who's, Fabio not who's not with us today, but they've all been working really hard as backup in the chat rooms. You've seen them posting things. Paula's just saying thank you there, modesty. Uh, I think she, I think she should switch on her camera and Jenny. <laughs> so we've done and put 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 their cameras on. Yeah. There you go. There's Paula. Paula. Uh, Jenny. Jenny, I think Jenny's Jenny's okay. gone. She's, 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 she's shy. shy. <laughs> okay. So we're all here in uh, Italy, Spain, and England, um, presenting to you guys all over the world. So it's been great fun. And oh, Jenny's saying, "I'm sorry, my camera's gone down." Okay. Doesn't work. Okay, there we go. So you uh, see, somebody just asked for the Pinterest link. I, it's on the handouts as well, isn't it? Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. So you okay, didn't everyone. make it down from the slide. Okay. So big thanks. Um, Bye. Everyone. Thanks a lot. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.